Okay, so a company called Codecrafters had reached out to me and I looked at their website and I was genuinely blown away at how awesome this website looks. Essentially, the idea is that it will help you with your programming projects. You'll get code examples, screencasts, and it'll give you like little steps along the way to complete your project. So there is an affiliate link in the description. However, I am going to be giving my honest opinions. And also, if you're interested in trying this out for free, they have a free beta for the BitTorrent challenge. So you can try making your own BitTorrent uh, for completely free, I believe, for the next couple of weeks if you're watching this early. Today we're going to be trying the Redis challenge. Okay, so we're on our first stage and the first task is just to create a simple ping command. So we just listen for a ping and if they send a ping then we send back a pong. So we're going to accept the connection. Uh, in this case it's just going to be the stream. Okay, so it's just stream.read. I, I didn't get a... Uh, you got a... Uh, really important that you pre-loop because if you don't pre-loop then you're going to run into a lot of, a lot of issues. Let's pre-loop and see if... Uh, if that helps our case. Yeah, we had to, okay, we had to pre-loop, okay. Uh, we need to figure out how to uh, convert a string slice to a buffer. But this is literally the first option. How did I miss that? I'm actually mentally wrong. This is taking so long. Why is it taking so long just to get a TCP server running? Um, I, I mean, we got the TCP server running, but now I can't actually call it with a client because I'm stupid. What? This is like the easiest step. <laughs> so pissed off don't ask why i just impersonated a machine gun okay 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 okay, okay, okay. i think that we're at a point where it's okay to look at the the the, the code the codes because like help <laughs> okay okay now now it makes no sense what if we literally just connection dot right do nothing else oh it worked okay so po postman is just shit um, on a positive note, Codecrafters helped because um, I saw that they were only writing it and then it made me think, oh, why are they only writing it? Oh, it's because I'm stupid and you can't open a connection and send without sending a message and ex expect a reply. Unbreak ping. Get push origin master. It's gonna live unlock. It's gonna do it. Yeah, we did it. We did it. It live unlocked. Oh wait, they literally called it the exact same function as me. That's kind of crazy. I, I promise I didn't copy them. Um, what? They, they literally wrote the exact... Oh wait, that's me. I, I forgot this platform is actually good. Rust. We'll do that. I, I figured it out, guys. This is why taking a shit while programming is really useful. Uh, okay. And then we do that. And then we <laughs> I just realized <laughs> I don't mean take a shit while programming. I, I feel like code crafters are gonna be really pissed off when I upload this and I'm just saying really stupid shit. They'll be like, oh, what is this guy on? It, it's just crying. Oh, what the fuck? Okay, zero. What? Wait, we can ask the chatbot. We can ask the chatbot things. Oh, does the, the, the AI not reply? Okay, well, that's a shame. Note to the co Codecrafters team, if this AI could reply to you, I understand there's budget limitations and stuff like that, but if you could get this AI to reply to people, that would be really cool. Uh, like, I would I would actually cream. Okay, maybe that's a bit far. Wait, what? I'm so, I'm, I'm, am I, like, living in a simulation? This is also a Redis example. Is it? Does it just mean that if we do async like this without spawning a task, that it's just pointless. I feel like it is. I think we do have to manually create new, the new thread, which I, I actually think is okay. I think it makes sense because uh, that way it's explicit. So um, all we do is we do Tokyo spawn uh, and then we'll do an async move. Uh, it's fine to move this this data. Um, and then we'll do that. Uh, but then we'll get back to the problem of, uh, you know, error handling. <laughs> Not how we're meant to do it, but it's fine. We'll look at the code examples and improve. This is why code Crafters is good. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot the name. I, got, I forgot the fucking name. Ping. Pong. Alright. Moment of truth. Will it work? Ping. Pong. We did concurrency. Let's go. Um, <laughs> that's, that's epic. That's very epic. Okay. Let's look at the code examples and see how we can improve our code now. It's going to close all those tabs. Um, okay. Uh, there are screencasts as well, by the way. Some really kind people have posted. Um, how to actually solve these problems, which is awesome. They're returning an IO result, but they're not returning the result. Are they just like unwrapping and stuff? Oh no, they, they, this returns a result as well. So maybe it has to return an IO result. Do we need them to? We don't. 
cool. That code's wrong. <laughs> no. Um, okay. Yeah, we just completed it. It's complete. We're getting there. We got three left. And I've only been doing this for what, like an hour and a half? I should not have been doing this for an hour and a half. This took an hour and a half, guys. I'm sorry, I really am. The next task is to uh, write an echo command. Now you may think, ah, oh, that's easy. Um, but it, it's not. It's it's actually quite complicated. Uh, we're gonna have to do a lot of parsing because essentially Redis has this uh, this system, I presume to make their, their requests really efficient. I originally thought that they've not provided much information at all. They've just like given like a couple sentences, but uh, like the more questions I had and the more I read the documentation, the documentation actually covers everything. So like, it's absolutely fine that they haven't described this very well because it actually encourages you to read documentation properly rather than quote unquote cheating. So the way that these are passed is in an array form. So we need to write a parser in Rust, which is something I've been wanting to do, but I'm probably going to regret it. We could have a trait. That would be really cool. This is a genuinely my first time using traits on my own. I'm so proud of myself. I'm actually learning, I, like, I actually feel like I'm coding like a Rust programmer. It'd be really useful, code crafters, if you could make it so people's code snippets could have like upvotes and then they'll be ranked, oops, uh, they could be ranked up on those upvotes because then like for me when I'm looking at code, uh, I can look at who has the most upvotes um, and decide, you know, whose code to look at to take an example from. I've managed to do a stupid thing again. You see this read to string thing here. That's only meant to stop when the stream stops. I mean, it means that um, nothing happens until the, the stream ends, which is exactly what was happening. I was like, why is this happening? It's because I've literally fucking told it to do that. Yeah. It actually sent it properly. No way. Well, let's actually not can't get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, but it, it, recognizes, it recognizes the command. Thank you, Python. I don't hate you anymore, Python. I had to do a voiceover for this section because I was playing copyrighted music, but the next task is to pass an array because the echo command is gonna take two arguments. It's gonna take the command name and then the data that's gonna be echoed. So we'll see how it goes. I came up with quite a wacky solution, which I do fix later. What I did is I split the raw data by the CRLF character, which are the characters I've highlighted here. I create a loop and this is where it gets a bit wacky. I keep track of the place in the string and then get that section and pass it into the parser, which means like it has to do the dot next function to twice when it shouldn't. We did it! We did it guys! I'm gonna turn this off so it doesn't annoy you. We actually, we, we passed the tests, we wrote code that works on our own almost. <laughs> Nearly. So what I realized we could do is we could actually just pass in this split into the deserialize function, let it do its operation so that when it gets to the next item, it will be at the right place anyway. Um, so I don't need to do any more of this shit. I can make it a lot faster and then I don't have to feel so guilty about my code. Okay, so I've done a few adjustments, which has helped a lot. So the first thing I did was I changed this to an and string so it didn't return the weird um, null characters. I, I still don't know why I did that. And second of all, I figured out a way to pass in this as peekable, which is really good. I say figured out, I asked ChatGPT, but still. Um, but now I'm coming across something very weird. So we're meant to stop because the last item in this split is going to be uh, an empty character. So we need to make sure that when we hit that empty character that we break, otherwise it's going to cause an error. Um, but the weird thing that's happening right here, uh, and I'll show you, is that if I run this and then I make a request with the client, um, for some reason, this empty string here, I'm printing it, is clearly empty. For some reason, it thinks it's 1001 characters long, uh, which makes absolutely no sense. So, fingers crossed, this will now work. This is what I've said the last five times and it didn't. Hey, we got it. We did it, guys. We actually did it. I'm so excited. Okay. We got it, we wrote good code. The thing is about this, is it worked before. This was just refactoring, and then the refactoring involved a bunch of debugging. Weird stuff has happened today, but we got it working. I'll tell you why I'm really excited about this. So this is somebody's entire code for passing. Um, so it's, it's, it's quite uh, messy. I, I won't lie, I'm sorry to whoever this is. Um, something that I would probably write usually. But the reason I'm really proud of this is this is my passing code. Um, which it looks a lot different, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> but no, I don't usually, like, I'm really proud of this just because of how clean it looks. I don't usually write code that's, like, this good. 
Okay, so we should be able to set and get now from the server. So uh, we should be able to set my key to my value. Oh yeah, so that's the previous value. So that makes sense. It's, it seems to be working as intended. So we restart the server uh, and we just call this. Yeah, we get okay and then we get my value. Brilliant. So we have setting and getting working, which is really, really awesome to see. Oh, <gasps> we did it. We actually did it. That was, that was so easy. Let's go. I'm so happy. Okay, now we just need to do expiries, so we'll figure out how that works and get started with that and then we're done. Okay, so we now have a cash value struct which will contain a expiry and a value. Alright, so we've written it in a way that it should uh, pass the tests. So we're gonna do the test, see if it works. If this actually works, by the way, I'm gonna be so proud um, because I haven't even tested this like myself. Oh, it failed! No! Wait, so it does expire, then why is it freaking out? I don't know what's going on. It seems to be working on my side. I'm wondering if their test case is just not working. Someone's commented that PX is passed using lowercase, which they actually do. Wait, so I think what's happened is they're giving us a lowercase even though the specification says uppercase. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. So, fingers crossed. Come on. Come on. You can do it. I believe. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It passed! It passed! We did it! We did the challenge, guys! <laughs> awesome! Uh, okay, so that is a little piece of feedback for you code crafters. Is This clearly is uppercase, but the test is actually lowercase. Um, thank you very much, um, epoch.fr, for solving that for us. So it did work first try. I just m missed the fact that they're testing in lowercase for some reason. Okay, so overall, I actually really love Code Crafters, and I would genuinely recommend it if you're interested in working on some projects. I know this is different to my usual style of videos, so if you've got any feedback, let me know, and I'll see you in a few weeks.